Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be going over DXF imports and how we can use this to import mechanical models and then also line up some registration holes and, and other things that we might need when we're getting started with a new project. So let's get started with a new project here. Uh, we're going to import a file from another project I have in here. So I'm going to go into import DXF file and we're going to browse and it is actually in my DOS blink input um, folder but we're actually in a new folder so I'm just going to import this one. And so this is just boardoutline.dxf. There's another video I'm going to be making about how to actually get this to look good. Um, there has been a lot of issues with uh, DXF imports. It needs to actually be a certain file format, and I'm really hoping this improves a little bit in future versions of KiCad. Um, uh, you, you, know, you have to make sure it's flat and all this other stuff. This actually is a very clean file, and so um, we're fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say, where do we want to put it? Well, we're going to put it in the center of the page, and we want to put it on the edge cuts layer because this is... Uh, I'm actually going to change this to 15 because I usually have... Uh, 0.15 millimeters uh, as my as my width there. Oh, actually, no, that's sorry. That is usually 0.20. I'm thinking uh, 20 mils versus 15 mils. Um, so 0.2 millimeters edge cuts layer. We could put it on any other layer, and this is another way we can import things like uh, you know outlines of graphics may what we might want and, and things like that. We'll also make other videos about how to import graphics in future videos. All right, so we're going to import this thing, and you see it is a pretty standard shape here um, within my my frame, and I'm just going to drop it kind of in the middle here. And okay, so this is a pretty standard, like I said, uh, you know, these are lines that have been imported, uh, and this is a pretty clean, pretty clean thing. Now, what I want to do though is I want to uh, import a hole that I can replace this with. So I wouldn't necessarily want to send this to the fab because this is basically, basically saying, hey, can you route out in this hole shape? I want to actually replace that with a uh, an actual mounting hole. And normally, I would have this in. Uh, I would normally have this in the, the the layout as well, or sorry, the schematic as well. I would have a mounting hole so that it doesn't disappear when I go from you know schematic to layout. But in this case, I'm just going to show you here. So we're going to go to the mounting hole uh, thing. I'm going to guess that that's about a uh, well. Let's just see. I think I think it's a 2.5 millimeter or 2.5 m 2.5 hole, just because I created this before. So let's double click, and it looks like no, that looks like it's a little bit bigger. That must be an M3 hole. <coughs> so we'll. Get rid of that one. Try that one more time. Select by browser. And oh boy, it puts it off the wrong screen here. Uh, so let's go down to M M3, the 3.2 millimeters. Let's see how that looks. Double click. Yeah, that looks much closer to what I want. Okay, so now how do I go and actually center this in this hole? That's something that I I you know I could I guess I could change you know I could go and right click and change the grid and make it or you know a really small thing here but I wanted to show another trick that I've learned uh, since because this is a uh, this is a, a circle in DXF format right so you actually see it does have a center point and you can snap to that center point so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit spacebar and now you see in the lower right corner it's become I'm on that registration axis now Okay, great. And now what I want to do is I want to select this guy, hit M to move, and then I'm going to hit Control M for this uh, pad. And what I'm going to say is go to user origin, which I just set, and set it over zero zero. How about that? Cool. Now we can put together another thing that we've done in the past. Um, we've been showing you how to select just certain items. I'm going to select both these things, and then right click, say select filter. And then I'm going to un undo footprints, and now I can move this guy out of here and just delete it. So now I've lined up this mounting hole with my DXF imported mounting hole, and that's been really important for me because usually when I'm using a DXF, it means that I have a precise model that I want to match. And in this case, I'm able to exactly match up this uh, mounting hole with what that's going to be. Now, that might have actually been on M4 or whatever. You can, you can you know, use whatever kind of hole you want here as well. But I do recommend if you're going to, uh, you know, if you're going to be importing things that have mounting holes and registrations and things like that, this is a great trick for doing that kind of thing because I think the move exactly and selecting, you know, selecting the the, um, the replacement holes like that is really important. What well, this is going to be different now. The, the reason we want to do this in the first place is because we want to be able to say on the drill file we're going to have a big big circle on the drill file so that the manufacturer knows okay I'm going to put a 3.2 millimeter hole through here right otherwise they're going to take a 100 millimeter 
uh, drill bit and then go around the edge and it might not be what you want. They might figure it out. They, you know, the board houses have uh, checkers that have been really great. They've saved my bacon many times. Uh, but sometimes you want to just make sure, well, I, I, all the time, you want to make sure that you have a good file that you send to them. And I think this is the right way to do it. You want to say, hey, this should be a 3.2 millimeter hole because, uh, or whatever, you know, whatever your hole size is, because you want to make sure that, uh, you know, if you have a screw, that you can actually get it through that hole. So that's all for now on this. Uh, we'll have more about DXF imports. Like I said, there is some wonkiness with the files and uh, with uh, figuring out how how to uh, get things imported. I I've done some crazy, you know, uh, projections in uh, Fusion 360, which I use for CAD, and I'm trying to like kind of get these outlines. And there's all these weird shapes. You know, if you start having shapes that are like I sh showed, it's just a square, a square with a bunch of circles for holes. That's super easy. When you start having curves and other things, KiCad has some issues, uh, and we will definitely talk about that in the future. Same thing. Uh, if you want to import graphics, we'll be going over that in future videos as well. So if you have any other questions, you can always go over to the forum. That's forum.contextualelectronics.com. We talk about things like this and ways to get uh, get your boards looking good. Or you can go over to the KiCad uh, KiCad forum if you have questions about DXF in general. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.